Okay, so this is our third and final example on conditional probability. So let's read the problem. We have a company that's ordering small parts, and they're shipped in large bins. And there are two different suppliers. There's supplier A and supplier B. So right away, let's label our events, right? A company is ordering small parts, and they're being shipped from supplier A or supplier B. So we'll let A equal the event that a part comes from supplier A and we'll let B of course be the event that a part comes from supplier B. So what else do we know? So we know from history that 3% of the parts supplied by A are defective. So here's a third event of interest, the event of a part being defective. So let's say that D is the event that a part is defective. So we have our three events of interest. So we know from history that 3% of the parts supplied by A are defective. So the question is, how do we write this down? Well, let's, read it. let's look at this again. So 3% of the parts supplied by A are defective. So this means that the probability that a part is defective, given that we know the part was supplied by A, is equal to 3%, so 0 0.03. So we have a conditional probability. 3% of the parts supplied by A are defective. So given that a part comes from supplier A, the probability of it being defective is 3%. While 7% of the parts supplied by B are defective. So that's the other conditional probability. So given that a part is coming from supplier B, the probability it is defective is 7%, 0 0.07. And we have here one last piece of information. We were told that A supplies four times as many parts as B. So the question is, well, hmm, how do we figure out the probability of A and the probability of B? Well, think about this for a second. There are only two possibilities here, since there are only two suppliers. Either a part comes from supplier A or supplier B. And since those are the only two possibilities, and there is no overlap, a part cannot come from both supplier A and supplier B. So if we add the probability that a part comes from A with the probability that a part comes from B, it has to equal 1. because a and B cover all possibilities, and there is no overlap between events A and B. Also, A supplies four times as many parts as B. So that means that P of A is four times bigger than P of B. Well, look at what you have on the left-hand side. 4P of B plus P of B, this is 5 times P of B, and that's equal to 1. Divide by 5, so P of B is 1 over 5, or if you prefer, 0 0.2. And P of A, well, P of A was 4 times P of B, so it's 4 over 5, which is 0.8, or if you do 4 times 0.2, also gives you 0.8. So now we can summarize what we have. We have P of D given A is 0.03, P of D given B is 0.07, we know that P of A is 0 0.8, and P of B is 0 0.2. And one last observation. If you look at A and B, if a part does not come from supplier A, it has to be coming from supplier B, and vice versa. 
So A is the complement of B, and B is also the complement of A. If a part does not come from B, it comes from A. If a part does not come from A, it comes from B. So now we have translated everything we know about the situation using proper notation of probabilities. So what's the first question? So imagine the situation you have a warehouse with large bins and the bins contains these small parts. Some of the bins are coming from supplier A, some of the bins are coming from supplier B. So the first question is, if an employee randomly selects a bin and a part inside that bin at random, what is the probability that the part is defective? So you have an employee that randomly selects a part, and the question is, what is the probability that it is defective? So we're asking for, quite simply, P of D. And now the question is, well, how do we find P of D? The problem is that we don't know at this point if the part is coming from supplier A or supplier B. But if we know it's coming from supplier A, we know P of D. If we know the part is coming from supplier B, we know P of D. So the idea is the law of total probability. Condition the event on all possibilities. So we condition first on the part coming from A. So P of D given A times P of A. Or we condition on the only other option, and that is the part is coming from supplier B. So P of D given B times P of B. And this is very easy because we have everything. P of D given A, well that's 0 0.03. P of A, 0 0.8. Plus P of D given B, 0 0.07. And P of B, 0 0.2. If you use your calculator, and compute this, you get 0 0.03 times 0 0.8 plus 0 0.07 times 0 0.2, and you get exactly 0 0.038. So if an employee randomly selects a part, the probability it is defective is 0 0.38, or if you prefer, 3.8%. And that's part A. What is part B? Well, here's the question. If an employee randomly selects a bin and a part inside that bin, what is the probability that the part came from supplier A, given that it is defective? So this is P of A given the event D. So we're trying to find the probability a part came from supplier A given that the part was found to be defective. So imagine the following question. You pick a part at random, and you observe it, and you find it's defective, and now you're asking the question, what is the probability this part was supplied by supplier A? Well, if you look at what we know, we know something very close to this. We know P of D given A, and we want to flip the two events. We want to go from P of D given A to P of A given D. Well, this looks like a job for Bayes' theorem. So Bayes' theorem says that if you want to flip the order of the events, so P of A given D will be P of D given A, but then you have to multiply by P of A and divide by P of D. And now if you look at this, we know all of these three quantities. P of D given A, 0 0.03. P of A, 0 0.8. Over P of D, which we have just found. Accident? I think not. 0 0.038. And if we compute this, so we get 0 0.03 times 
divided by 0 0.038. And we get here approximately 0 0.6316. And that's P of A given D. Well, what's part C? So we're being told again that an employee will randomly select a bin and a part inside that bin. What is the probability that the part came from supplier B, given that it is non-defective? Right? So we're looking at P of B, given, well, if D is defective, D complement is non-defective. So we look for P of B given the complement. The question is now, well, how do we figure this out? If we look here at P of D given B, it looks very close to what we have here. But once again, it is inverted. So we'll try and use Bayes' theorem. We'll flip this around. So this will be P of D complement, given B, times P of B over P of D complement. Now if you look back, we know P of D given B, and we know P of D. And now we have the complement instead. So we can quite simply use the complement rule. So P of D complement given B, that's just 1 minus P of D given B. P of B is P of B over P of D complement 1 minus P of D. So we had to use Bayes' theorem and then twice the complement rule. But we know everything so what does that give us? Well, 1 minus P of D given B. P of D given B is 7%. 1 minus that is 93%, so 0 0.93. P of B is 0 0.2. One minus P of D, well we found P of D to be 0 0.038, so one minus that gives us 0 0.962. Right? One minus P of D, P of D equals 0 0.038, and we get 0.962. And now again we can use our calculator. And we have 0.93 times 0.2 divided by 0.962. And that's approximately 0 0.1933. And we now have P of B given D complement. There's one last part, part D. Let's see what the question is. So we're being told, again, an employee randomly selects a part inside of a randomly selected bin, and we're asking for the probability that the part came from supplier A, given that it is non-defective. So that's P of A, given that D complement. And so the question is, well, how do we figure this out? At this point, you should remember the complement rule and also the fact that A is B complement. So let's replace A by B complement. So we have P of B complement given D complement. And by the complement rule, this is just 1 minus P of B given D complement. But this we've just found in part C. So we'll get that P of A given D complement is just 1 minus this value, and this will give you approximately 0 0.8066, and this completes the problem.